It's wonderful to see the restoration work that's happened to the environment. It's a great resource for school groups and community groups to get involved. The kids who ride to school use this track every day. It's just a fantastic trail. I think it's something that will be there for the community forever. The Yarrawee Trail is, is 16 kilometres long and it runs uh, from the north of Ballarat right through to below the, the main urban area. So it runs through a great variety of environments and that's, that's part of its attraction. When I talk to people I talk about the forest and what great horseshoes of forest we've got in Ballarat and this links that and it actually takes people from their suburban houses out to those forests and to, to get out to enjoy it. Well the Yarrawee Restoration Project, it's the biggest environmental project to happen in Ballarat for over a hundred years. And that's been a real challenge because uh, when the work was initially envisaged, what the community was facing was a river valley completely clogged by the remains of mining, the mullock heaps, the silt, just an area full of weeds and that for over a hundred years had been used as a dumping ground and been totally neglected. Gold certainly made Ballarat. It made Ballarat what it is today, all the beautiful buildings and, and the city that it is, but it left its legacy. And the legacy really was incredible degradation that occurred you know, right from the very early days, it, the, the trees were removed from the landscape, mostly to timber the mines. So the landscape's really been turned over more than once and it's been incredibly degraded and essentially what we're looking at here is a landscape of degradation. The project started in 1982, really. That's when you can trace it back to its, its earliest beginnings. And uh, as these sorts of projects can do, it started in a rather informal way, just with an idea. I had a group of students at Ballant and Thurman College and we're doing something on Buddhism. And in that philosophy, you, you plant a tree to, uh, to look after. So I planted trees for all the kids in my class. Luckily, we had a fellow out at uh, one of the nurseries who had all this root-bound stock and he said, take it. So Saturday afternoons, we come down, dig holes, plant trees, didn't matter what we were planting, anything. We weren't really doing it on grounds for any ecological grounds, it was just a work up a thirst. What we're doing here is just making a bit of a path at this site for the school kids that are coming down to do a planting. Um, it's just recently been groomed, there's a lot of blackberry sticking out of here and we're just making it a little bit safer. The early work of the volunteers led to the development of a project to restore the whole Yarrawee River Corridor. Uh, part of that project was the production of a master plan for the corridor but the overwhelming success of the project has come about as a result of the support of our partner organisations who put tremendous resources and energy and support into the project. It's much more than just the funding that those partnerships bring. It's very much about a sense of togetherness in the community amongst the key agencies and the community at large getting together to deliver a project like this. I can recall standing at Eel Station Park overlooking the Arrowy River talking to a really enthusiastic group of people telling me about their 20 year plan to reclaim the Yarrawee River and the tributaries and um, we said well let's cut that in half and we were able to do that fortunately and since that time we've contributed a lot of planning time and in excess of a million dollars towards the project and we don't regret spending one cent of that. So that in the last five to six years there's been uh, easily five million dollars direct funds spent both by council and those other organisations on the project and uh, just thousands and thousands of volunteer hours put in through 90 community groups who've been part of the project, school groups, service clubs. Yes well Ballarat has a has a very great tradition of volunteerism and uh, I think about 25 percent of the population of Ballarat are involved in a volunteer group. The public open spaces of Ballarat have been a challenge for some of those groups and particularly the waterways of Ballarat have been a very great opportunity for uh, enhancement uh, of the environment. 
it's tremendous to see that this is happening and it's continuing in, and I think that's the important thing that you know it hasn't just been a, a short project that you then drop you know that this is going to go on um, yeah, as a lifetime commitment. We got uh, called the water rats because um, mainly because we got sent into all the uh, water and that to uh, retrieve all the rubbish and uh, stuff out of the, the river along here. We got all the, uh, the messy jobs to go in, into the mud and everything. Jobs no one else wanted to do. That was about it. Getting the, uh, the students involved is a really um, rewarding aspect of the work that we do. Being able to teach the kids about biodiversity, water quality and why we do the tree planting uh, is a very important aspect and that follows them through life. Back in the 1980s when the project first started, we were pretty good at planting trees and gum trees. Since then we've become a lot more sophisticated and through our indigenous plants nursery we now grow everything from aquatic plants to semi-aquatic plants to right through to trees but grasses and shrubs all indigenous to the area and part of the exercise is to is to go out and collect seed which is then stored in our local seed bank and then we grow on that seed also in tandem with that has been the removal of willows which were planted along the river to try and stabilize the banks as a result of all the gold mining activity. We now regard willows as a pest, so we're gradually removing those because they do have habitat value and they do help to stabilize the banks. And as we do that, and we leave the stumps behind to help with the, the stabilization of the banks, we replace the willows with the indigenous species. We found it harder to actually fix up the, the waterway itself and we've spent quite a lot of time over the last few years doing that by building wetlands and uh, putting in gross pollutant traps, even improving our street sweeping within the streets of the city to improve the overall appearance and, and quality and, and environment of the waterway itself. Well, the problem was is that we've had willows as a monoculture right in along the waterways. And with that, all that lived underneath was blackberries and gauze. And through removal of that, we've put back grasses and native trees, which are the basis of what falls in along the waterways. And so the bugs can eat them. And from that, then we can get those larger predators. The water quality has improved because we've now made it a bit more diverse for things to live here. Instead of just snails and worms, we have other things like mayflies and stoneflies back in the top of the catchment. People can now walk right along the length uh, and because they can see what's going on they're concerned about it and they're demanding higher standards and uh, we're happy for that because as a water authority we want rivers to be healthy, uh, we want good quality water and uh, we want an educated population. This does it all. The Yarrawee River starts right near the top of the Great Dividing Range and that's where the Yarrawee Trail starts as well. So you've got this interest of starting right from the beginning of the waterway and gradually working downstream and seeing how the river changes and how the whole environment of that changes. The first couple of kilometres of the trail are through native bushland and you go along beside the river uh, with that, that native vegetation and uh, work your way through to uh, the Ballarat Bypass Coming out the other side, you really are entering the part of uh, the river where it was affected by the early gold mining. You go past one of the created wetlands that's been built at a little place called Narina, and uh, that's become a very popular spot for people to picnic and uh, watch birds. And it's just one of the examples of reintroducing what would have been along the river previously. There would have been meanders and billabongs all the way along, so the wetlands helped to do that. And then it gets into the central area of the city where the environment is totally different. The channel of the river itself changes from an open channel to a bluestone line channel, which is a, a legacy from the gold rush days. Heading south into Sebastopol, a very historic gold mining area, you come to the recently created Yarrawee Redan wetlands, which are a, a terrific example of a modern water quality treatment system that incorporates lots of natural attributes. Uh, it's full of aquatic plants, 
and for most people they wouldn't, probably wouldn't even realise that it was a, a water treatment system because it looks like a lovely big lake. An emerging area is the idea of community groups and individuals adopting sections of the Yarrawee and its tributaries. Of course, when it was weed infested and a really nasty place to go, if you backed onto, your property backed onto the Yarrawee, you really didn't want to know about it or you dumped your garden waste in it. Now that it is such an asset, people are coming to us and saying, well, we'd really like to look after this section. Well, this has been transformed, of course, from what was an eyesore into something that's rather beautiful. And like once upon a time, you know, many, many people wouldn't want to live beside the Arrowee Creek. But now, you know, with combined heritage, with the infrastructure development, lots of people are wanting to live there. It's cleaned it up and people are seeing it as part of history. If you're going to have an area that is not only improved, but sustainable into the future, you do need to have that community ownership. People in Ballarat now feel that they own this area, they're proud about it, and that means that they'll ensure that it's protected, not just now, but right into the future. We've actually incorporated a lot of the trails into our runs now to access the forest further out. So for us, it's been a beautiful way to meet in the city and then explore the, the forest via the trails. To see over a period of years, the, the whole thing being done systematically and being done properly, it's here to stay now and it looks it just is a wonderful asset. I think we've turned the corner. It's no longer a drain, it's a, it's a valuable river that the community can enjoy. It didn't mean much to start, but once I've got into it it means yeah, life is the birds have come back, there's fish in the river, there's people using it. Um, just general good feeling about the um, the whole place to see it getting used and no, it's just been really good. Starting from just two or three people with, with an inspiration, with a vision for what could be done to the city, to now having thousands of people involved and appreciating it and using it, makes it extremely special. And it's the sort of project that you know, will resonate, if you like, throughout the community for forever.